Listen and understand, hodlers are out there, Sarah. They can't read a white paper. They can't code. They don't fear downturns or regulation. And they will absolutely not sell, ever, until they are wrecked. <sighs> What's going on, guys? It's K-Dub here with another episode of Crypto Zombie. So today is January 1st of 2019. I'm sure you're going to be doing a lot of scribbling out and changing that eight to a nine. But that being said, congratulations on making it this far. And also to everyone, I hope you had a safe night last night. If you're feeling a little, uh, you know, maybe you had a little too much to drink, it's all right. I'll try to keep today's episode short and sweet and calm for you guys, all right? But that being said, we have a lot to talk about, so let's get into it. And thank you for joining. Thank you for everyone that's been liking, subscribing, commenting. You guys freaking rule. Let's have a look at the markets on day number one of 2019. So far, it's really not that bad. There's not too much happening right now. We have a market cap of 127 billion, Bitcoin sitting around 3,766, XRP 35 cents, Ethereum $136. No, we did not see Ethereum flip over XRP. However, they are very, very, very close right now with only about 300 million really separating these two coins right now. Bitcoin dominance at 51.6%. Now, if you were scrolling through this morning, you might have seen something sort of jump right off the page, and that's this new guy right here at the number 20 spot, Paragon, up a whopping 4,230%. What is this all about? Now, Paragon recently had a situation with the SEC. They had to pay a bunch of fines. So as you guys know, you know, they're one of the, you know, weed coins. Obviously, you can see they're skyrocketing here. We also have Ravine, Veritasium, Stratus, Bitcoin X, Dex, Odom, Zillica, Waves, Mobile Go, and Holochain as well. But getting back to Paragon, the interesting thing is, if you notice, it says the volume is only 20 27,501. That is so unbelievably low. Extremely manipulative, in my opinion. I would not suggest buying into this whatsoever. Now, the interesting thing was this morning when I was actually watching the price go up, you could see it was a little bit cheaper. It had only pumped, only pumped 2,500, right? It was around $2.93, but I highlighted right here. You could see it was saying it did 109,000, but obviously, Stacks right here, um, excuse me, Stex USD was doing 804, but if you go back over here, you can see that they've actually omitted it, saying price volume excluded outlier detected. So yeah, that's what's happening with that in the morning. So uh, congratulations to anyone holding Paragon, but I wouldn't buy it right now. So this is currently where we're at right here. You know, we were looking at that sort of inverse head and shoulder pattern that was forming, but now it seems like we're almost just going sideways and consolidating it. So we could be getting ready for some kind of a move, whether it be all the way up here, shooting up to 5,600, which it could do that, you know, or we could just go sideways for a little bit more. We'll have to keep an eye on it. But today, let's talk about the obvious. We know what happened. Backed got delayed again. Why are we not surprised about this? We pretty much called this out. The government shutdown alone affected it because they still have to do their comments. They have the 30-day period. So it's virtually impossible unless they were going to be doing this on Christmas Eve, which they clearly weren't, and the government was shut down. So that's been pushed back. But what we do know is that they have actually completed their first round of funding, raising $182.5 million from 12 partners. So this is actually pretty reassuring. They just raised all this money. They're going forward. A few of them in here, I noticed. You got Galaxy Digital, Mike Novogratz, Pant Pantera Capital's in there as well. Also, Mike Microsoft's venture capital arm, M12. So very, very, very interesting. PayU's in there, Horizon Ventures, Alan Howard. I'm surprised that the... um. Digital currency group isn't in there. You, you would almost expect them to get in on something like this. So as you can see right here, this is the notice that they sent out. This came out last night, and it says the launch had previously been set for January 24th, but will be amended pursuant to the CFTC's process and timeline. So that's basically the situation moving forward. Now, let's talk a little bit about the markets, because according to Jed McCaleb, we are not in a bear market. <laughs> Okay, let's 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 give him let's give him the stage. Let's let him talk a second. So while speaking on a phone interview with Yahoo Finance, co-founder and chief technology officer of Stellar, Jed McCaleb was questioned about his key takeaways from the near long decade experience that he's had in the industry. If Bitcoin and blockchain will ever be adopted by financial institutions, and about the ongoing cryptocurrency bear market. So he pretty much just laughed and was like, 
you know, funny that people say when crypto's down, he goes, in my view, it's still way, way up. It's down from the peak, but only on the whole, it, but on the whole, it's way, way up. We don't focus on price that much. So, I mean, yeah, if you zoom out to the entire chart dating back, I mean, the data on here goes back to around August 11th or August 1st of 2011. So yeah, I mean, it's definitely up. I mean, we're, we're here, right? So it's clearly up, but compared to what we saw, yeah, I mean, a lot of people got wrecked. So you can't deny that. So to, to most people that got in, it's a bear market. It feels like a bear market minimally to them. But he does suggest that higher prices that we had, you know, in 2017 does bring more interest into the space. People tend to get excited. The price goes up. People want to buy it. Price goes down. Nobody wants to buy it, which is weird because when you go to a supermarket and something's on sale, you usually buy it. But I digress. <laughs> anyway, he talks about, you know, when cash comes in or, you know, whatever to the space, then it helps the projects to be able to develop. The current bear market has affected a lot of businesses who've been forced to lay off staff members. Obviously, we've seen consensus laying off members, Bitmain laying off a lot of their staff. Uh, that some, some of these uh, miners had to close down their operations all around, sell their locations or sell their their assets to cover losses, right? But he also provided a counter argument to this as well, saying that the idea of more cash flow, although it's a good thing, look what happened during that crazy ICO phase, right? So despite the bull market in the hype cycle, it kind of blinded investors and people were just sort of throwing money into whatever scammy ICO that they could throw their money into in hopes of making, you know, sick gains and going to the moon. So that's one of the things as well. So yes, in the grand scheme of things, we are up, but compared to where we were, I mean, geez, look at this, look at these, whoever bought up here, I mean, poor individual, but it's okay. We'll get into why if you bought at the all-time high, don't freak out. Just learn to be patient. <clears throat> but we'll get into that story in just a second because I wanted to continue a little bit more because he wasn't really so friendly <laughs> about this Yahoo Finance conversation. He, you know, he talks about how it's wild to watch people speculate and invest into these different projects. He says 90% of these projects are BS. I'm looking forward to changing that. And he specifically singles out Tron, saying that Tron is just garbage. He says people dump tons of money into it these things that just don't work. So it's interesting that he decided to pick on Tron. Now, I know Tron has had a lot of um, negativity around it, you know, plagiarizing Ethereum's white paper, having vaporware, and all these other things, but recently Tron has actually been working towards developing the infrastructure. You saw them buy out BitTorrent, a bunch of other things as well. And something that's interesting is that Tron's actually outperformed Ethereum in terms of actual smart contract development and usage, which is something that few people would have seen coming a year ago. Stellar has yet to really offer smart contract development platforms on the order of Ethereum or Tron, um, but he didn't really justify why he thinks Tron is garbage. Now, I'm not saying Tron is garbage. I'm saying he said Tron is garbage. I've actually recently become interested in looking into it because you know what I've decided that instead of just judging projects I'm actually going to just give them the floor see what they can do you know before we just you know throw the towel in I mean even Ethereum you know people have their you know criticisms about Ethereum but Ethereum has functioned pretty well over the past year it's it's, it's provided you know, it's it's definitely helped, although it did become a platform for ICOs. But anyway, long story short, when asked if people generally know about Stellar, he says, I don't think so. We've done a pretty poor job of marketing it and telling the world what Stellar is. I think they have a vague notion that is for payments, but I don't think they know the details and the real power of it. We're hoping to change that in 2019, but it is a process. So, I mean, what's your opinion on Tron? Do you guys have an opinion on it? I mean, I'm curious. Um, you know, I don't really... I don't have any hard judgment right now. There's a lot of projects still in the developmental phase, um, and they're gonna. A lot of them are gonna screw up. A lot of them are gonna make mistakes, and it's gonna be a learning period for everyone. But the one thing that everyone tends to agree on, and I'm definitely a proponent of this, is that Bitcoin will survive. Okay, um, I'm not a Bitcoin maximalist by any standard. Um, I'm. I like Bitcoin. I hold a lot of Bitcoin, um, but I'm not a Bitcoin maximalist, but I do like Bitcoin. So I hope that kind of clarifies. Now, talking to Jimmy Song, he was basically saying that Bitcoin is a social innovation and movement as it's inherently a form of money essentially, right? A leading social convention. He noted that during 2018, Bitcoin has begun to distinguish itself as a movement, disconnecting itself from the overarching cryptocurrency brand, which includes ICO tokens, utility coins, digital securities, and really any of these tokens that are coming out. The shift has been made evident by Bitcoin's relatively strong performance throughout the past 12 months as the flagship cryptocurrency gains Satoshis on nearly every altcoin, which is 
with the exception of, I mean, I know, I know XRP had a really, really good year as far as uh, maintaining its value, but for the most part, there's only a handful of cryptocurrencies that outperformed Bitcoin. So even though Bitcoin had a massive 80% pullback, well, most projects out there had upwards of 96% to 99%. So that's something that you actually can't really deny. You know, Bitcoin's resurgent was made even more apparent by the tectonic shift in market dominance as we had Bitcoin sitting around 32% and this morning it was sitting around 51 point something, right? So it, obviously people have put more of their faith into, into Bitcoin. Okay, it represents more than half the market at this point. So the centralized teams are discovering that raising money, particularly in a bull market, is a lot easier than building a real product that has a market fit. The ICO token buyers are discovering that tokens don't go up forever and that economic models which depend on continuous new money have stopped working. He goes on to say the Bitcoin protocol has continued to outperform and see boatloads of growth at a fundamental level. At the same time, all other projects are still really looking for that killer use case, whereas Bitcoin has established itself as a currency or as a store of value or as digital gold or whatever you want to refer to it as. But it's definitely established that. And he goes on to talk about the Lightning Network. You know, we don't have to get into it. They're obviously developing solutions around this. And the other thing that's pretty cool is in terms of privacy, protocols like Musig, Taproot, and Graphroot, and a bunch of other others have made significant process with some projects already pushing out real products. So there is that privacy element that will that it, they're trying to get to come to Bitcoin as well, which has been an issue. You know, Bitcoin is clearly traceable. So they also, or he, he finally says, you know, Bitcoin has been in the enviable position of allowing the market to determine what's desirable instead of some centralized authority. This is another point in which Bitcoin's advantage as a decentralized system shows itself. Now, Let's take that comparison. Let's talk about Bitcoin and gold. It's always a great topic, right? So crypto venture capitalist Lou Kerner says that Bitcoin is well on its way to becoming the new gold. So this was an interview that he did with Bloomberg. He's the founding partner of New York-based Crypto Oracle. And he had to say this. He said, Bitcoin's market cap has already surpassed silver. That's a fact. And he believes that crypto will ultimately be a bigger game changer than the internet. We'll have to see about that. <laughs> but he says what it's evolved into today is a store of value. And today, that main store of value is gold. It's an $8 trillion thing. Bitcoin today is around $60 billion. So I think it has an opportunity to actually replace gold as the dominant store of value, in which case it can go up more than 100x from where it is today. Now, this goes right on part with our story from yesterday. We were calling a $333,000 Bitcoin, right? Well... Bitcoin currently is sitting around roughly, I don't really know, 100%, but let's say 3,800 or 3,700, whatever. Well, 100x would put that around the 370,000, uh, 380,000 mark, which means we would be able to actually have a $333,000 Bitcoin, all right? And the other thing I wanted to point out was one of the members of the crypto zombie community, Julian, he actually wrote an article where he also believes that it's completely possible. You guys can go in it and have a look at this. Now, this is based on you know past performance, which we know doesn't indicate future performance, but if you look at the charts, it does kind of tend to stay in this channel. You know, yeah, it broke out a little bit here, 2014, a little bit here, but currently we find ourselves right here. So, I mean, could we dip lower? Could we fall out of this ribbon? Possibly, but more likely than not, you know, given past performance, we will stay in this ribbon. And as time goes on, you're going to find Bitcoin right around this. Moving across, you'll see that it's very plausible to actually have a $300,000 plus Bitcoin in the future moving forward. Now, let's talk about something that a lot of people don't talk about, but it exists. And there are similarities. So 2012 and 2016, what do both of these years have in common? They're not usually the years you bring up, right? Well, halvenings. Bitcoin underwent a halvening where the yearly Bitcoin inflation was algorithmically reduced by 50%. This is part of Bitcoin's deflationary monetary policy and why Austrian economists refer to Bitcoin as hard money, right? So if you look at the Bitcoin price chart, you'll notice that these two years have one other thing in common. The Bitcoin price increased significantly the year leading up to the halvening. Furthermore, the rally leading up to the halvening was in both cases followed by a brutal parabolic move just a few weeks after the halvening. So with the next Bitcoin halvening 
expected to happen May 2020, the time has come for investors to start paying attention to this pattern. So if history repeats itself, the, <clears throat> excuse me, historically, the halving starts getting priced in approximately one year before it happens, which would result in Bitcoin bottoming out in early 2019, followed by a rally starting in May 2019. So that's pretty much the goal. That's, that's, that's what we're looking at. So we could potentially move sideways for Q1 and Q2 of next year. And I'll be completely honest with you. I'm okay with that. I'm not in any rush for this thing to take off to the moon just yet. I am more than happy to accumulate at these prices, and even if it dips a little bit lower, I think it's way more of a blessing than a curse short term. But the question is, okay, let's say, what if it's different this time, right? Let's play devil's advocate. What if it doesn't play out? Well, let's just take this for example. Now, this is getting back to the topic of gold. Gold is the oldest form of money in existence. Um, I mean, you could argue that maybe there were other things, you know, but unlike ancient monies, right, like cattle or seashells or salt, gold can actually be said to have a hard-coded economic policy. There is a finite gold supply, and only a small portion of the gold supply can actually be extracted on a yearly basis, effectively setting a cap on its inflation. This inflation has historically been oscillating between around 2 and 3%, and the entire global gold supply can fit within the confines of an Olympic swimming pool. If you guys don't remember, Mike Novogratz was pointing that out the other day, which makes it a stupidly scarce asset, okay? So the scarcity combined with an established history and durability are some of the main factors why it's become a reserve asset of the world, ballooning its market capitalization to seven trillion, um, kind of fluctuates between seven and eight. But that being said, if you have an oscillation of inflation between two and 3% for gold, currently Bitcoin's inflation rate is roughly around 3.8. So this is interesting because once the halvening happens, it'll be reduced to 1.8% in the third block reward halvening. So this will make Bitcoin the first asset in the entire world to become a harder form of money than gold, where at the same time improving on all of the downsides of gold, which include portability, divisibility, and verification verification, right? So, you know, how do you know it's real gold? Well, you got to weigh it. You got to do density. You got to take a sample, right? You don't have to do that for Bitcoin. If, if, it's, if it's real Bitcoin, you know it's real Bitcoin, right? So the brutal algorithmic deflationary model of Bitcoin coupled with its other advantages over gold will start turning into an interesting asset for large institutions and eventually central banks. As Bitcoin's deflationary curve becomes more aggressive after the 2020 happening, it will inevitably start evolving into an asset with all of the qualities that large institutions and central banks look for in a reserve asset. Boom shakalaka. What do you think of that? How do you feel about that? Huh? I think that's pretty cool. Now, this isn't saying that banks are just going to start using Bitcoin, but it is saying that it's evolving into an asset with the qualities that large institutions and banks look for as a reserve asset. So this is just some positive news. I hope this story really helps to brighten up the first day of the year for you. I got excited. I was really pumped to see the inflation rate that it's actually going to be 1.8%, which is less than that of gold, which is crazy to me. So I just think that was a really great story. And I just had to share that with you guys today. Now, moving on, Bitcoin on Facebook. What? Well, this is a little bit of a little bit of a clickbaity title, but um, it's it's still true. So basically, cryptocurrency adoption pioneers Lite.im have just announced that the platform will now support Bitcoin payments. So this means that users of Facebook, Telegram, and even plain old SMS will now be able to send Bitcoin to one another via their chosen social application. So users of various popular social messaging applications and even SMS will now be able to send Bitcoin to their contacts using the Lite.im application Zulu Republic. The developer of the software announced the addition of Bitcoin to its list of supported crypto assets last week via a tweet. So um, it's also, they, all, they already support Litecoin, Ether, and the company's token ZTX, but it must be like an internal token because if we go over to CoinMarketCap and you look up ZTX, it doesn't, there is no ZTX. So I don't know, interesting. But um, yeah, so there you guys go. So Bitcoin technically, technically has officially come to Facebook. So there you go. Now, what other news do we have? Now, this is BitHum, right? Now, they are saying there is some unusual 
uh, manipulation and volume and, and crazy stuff that's been going on. Now, we know this happens, but guys, I mean, this is almost like taking it a bit too far here. I want to point a few things out. So this is a very long article. I'm going to drop it below. It's a very long read. Obviously, we'd be here all day talking about it, but one Redditor was kind enough to summarize it. So we're going to hop on over to that thread right here. So you could see that if you go, to, he says, first of all, look at the exchange uh, volume. Okay. So the exchange volume, first of all, is 1.3 billion. That's pretty massive, but it's possible, right? It is possible. So let's look into this a little bit further. Well, he takes, for example, one coin. It says Monero's volume alone is over 700 million. Well, let's have a look at this, okay? How is this even possible? So Monero, <laughs> if we go, has a volume of only 10 million USD for the past 24 hours. However, if we come down here to Bithum, Bithum claims that it has $696 million worth of volume, but there's only 10 million actually happening. As you can see right here, scrolling down, they've also emitted this volume excluded for some fishiness. Now, the other thing that they point out is the fact that if you look at the order book, it's entirely wash trading. And the thing is, is these guys, like, they're so lazy, they didn't even take the time <laughs> to change the numbers. I mean, it's the same order happening over and over and over again. So look right here. So here's, here's a screenshot of completed orders. This is obviously still dealing with Monero. 0 0.7, 0 0.7, 0 0.7, 0 0.7. And you can see the timestamps right here. I mean, they're only, you know, seconds apart. Same, same buy order, same amount. They're not even trying to hide this stuff. So that's definitely crazy. And they basically go on to just say that this is a big problem. You know, as long as these types of things are existing in crypto, crypto is never going to be considered a legitimate asset class. You can basically say goodbye to any chances of ETFs. And the SEC is always going to point out jokes like this. And if they don't, they'll be in trouble for allowing ETFs. So basically, this individual is saying, hey, guys, wake up. We need to clean the space up, right? So you can do a little more research on this yourself. You can have a look. But that's pretty much the situation that's going on. Also on the topics of, um, you know, red flags and things like this, I usually don't like to, you know, really talk about other, you know, people in the space, but it's been brought to my attention by a few people in the community. So I want to relay the message so that you can do your own research on this. Okay. So some people brought up this, um, there's a, a YouTuber Bitcoin fund manager. Okay. Um, basically they say he uploads separate videos, predicting the price going up and down, waits for the market to move either way, deletes the videos that are on the wrong side of the trade, reviews his accurate predictions, promises triple digit percentage daily returns, gambles it on 100x leverage, and it's all gone. Now, I mean, I don't know for a fact that this is what this guy does. However, there is this article that uh, has been circulating. This is the guy right here. So I don't know if you've seen him. I just wanted to point this out. This is a long list of different offenses and different things that he's done. He's made all different kinds of videos. So um, I encourage you to do your own research on this. Look into it. Um, I'm not going to say anything about it, but it looks like there's a lot of red flags. So please be careful out there. Um, you know, there's a lot of... Content creators, influencers, um, some of them are not very honest. Some of them have different motives. You know, take everything with a grain of salt. I mean, geez, guys, even don't listen to everything I say. You know, I have opinions, right? There's certain projects that I like. There's certain coins that I like, right? So always do your own research. I just wanted to bring that up. Um, shout out to the Crypto Zombies community for bringing that to my attention. Um, we have some quick news moving on. Let's, get, let's talk about some brighter news here. So uh, it says, today, IOHK published the proof of proof of stake paper. What a way to end the year, the paper is fundamental to having side chains on proof of stake systems and it is the first rigorous definition of side chains in proof of stake. Huge impact for, for Cardano and crypto in general. So that's pretty good news for Cardano. What's not pretty good news is the fact that India's government has continued its undecided stance on regulation around the cryptocurrency ecosystem. No timeline has been promised by the Minister of State Finance for enacting legislation. So it's been two years. The government has still yet to clarify stance on the regulatory policies of crypto. Not only that, the government doesn't even have a concrete plan regarding a timeline for finalizing the uh, the rules of it. So the announcement comes as no shock for Indian crypto traders as they have already faced a roller coaster of rules and regulations within the span of time. Unfortunately, the uncertainty around regulation will continue to thwart cryptocurrency related businesses in an economy of well over a billion people. It's unfortunate. It really is. Um, I mean... I wish they would at least just look at it. 
You know, I mean, they're just almost like brushing it off, like, eh, when we get around to it, we get around to it. So, you know, that's almost worse, right? Like, being ignored is almost worse than than being rejected, right? Like, you don't think about it, right? Um, so, anyway, moving on, let's talk about some positive news. So, Samurai Wallet actually introduced a new privacy feature that prevents coin tracking services from freezing users' funds and blocking their accounts, looking to tap into the market of those looking for complete privacy. So, protection with a flip of the switch is the motto that ricochet which is their most popular and valuable tool the feature adds additional hops or steps to every bitcoin transaction so blockchain spying software usually looks at a coin's history around five hops deep which means that these third-party apps would need to look 10 hops backwards to achieve the same level of security. However, driving 10 transactions deep into every coin's history are almost impossible due to the increased cost and overhead that these apps would face. So according to Samurai's uh, website, when turned on, the Ricochet feature enables the wallet to collect the needed inputs and calculates the total miner's fee for the entire Ricochet. The wallet then broadcasts the first decoy transaction, which looks like an ordinary transaction to a blockchain spying software after three Three more hops, the wallet then proceeds with the transaction as usual. So that's pretty cool. You're, you're seeing a lot of different privacy features. In fact, even with Ledger, they, you know, they have it where it generates a new address every time. So it's maybe it's not as private, right? But you know, you are seeing a lot of these different wallet providers having different solutions as well. And guys, so yesterday's video, I, I watched it and I was so embarrassed. So at the end of this video, this is what I, was, I meant to point to was this. It says, well, Bitcoin has stabilized at almost $14 a coin. I'm tired of waiting for a jump. So I'm taking the loss and getting my cash back. And you can see how long ago this tweet came out. Okay. So I wanted to basically point out, um, you know, this guy, Bitcoin had fallen to 14 and he was just like, all is lost. It's over. That's it. I'm cashing out. Can you imagine buying Bitcoin at $14? But to get back to my point yesterday, I'm sitting there and I'm like, read this guys, just read this. And in the video, I'm not pointing at anything. And people are like, what are you pointing at? And I'm, so I'm sorry, I make mistakes. I, I edit all my own videos. You know, I film them, I edit them, I do the research. I don't have anyone helping me. I make the thumbnails, I do everything. So sometimes I screw up and I forget to put stuff in. So that, that was the point I was trying to make, okay? That being said, guys, I'm out of here for the day. Hope you guys enjoy a great day. So we have one day and 14 hours before uh, Proof of Keys. We were talking about this in the Telegram chat last night. So, um, you know, are you planning on taking your crypto off the exchange? I've already taken all of my all, mine off, but I don't keep my cryptos on the exchanges anyway. So, um, you know, that's happening in two days. Obviously, guys, if you need a place to put it, Ledger Nano is apparently still doing their 30% off, which is insane. Um, this is a great discount guys they have it for uh you know all their ledgers in all their different colors uh you could pick all these different colors down here and then they also have the ledger blue as well so that being said guys but um unfortunately um you're probably not going to be able to get that <laughs> within the next two days so um if you guys do want to still buy one i have a link in the description it helps the channel out doesn't cost you a thing however if you are like really binded for time you can go over to exodus.io i'll leave a, a link in the description now this is a desktop wallet now they're they're not necessarily as secure although i've never had an issue with exodus but you know it's it's more of a hot wallet kind of in a way, right? So if you need one instantly, go over here, download it. You can put it right on your desktop and you can move your coins onto there. Uh, long term, would I keep your coins on here? Not really, but you know, when I first got into crypto, I used Exodus and it was a great wallet. I never had any issues. So that being said, guys, before we get on out of here, I just wanted to say, man, it has been an incredible 2018. I want to say thank you to everyone who's been liking, subscribing, commenting, everyone that's been joining the Crypto Zombies Telegram group, which is always in the link below. It's totally free, by the way. I don't like charge for the group. It's just a free community where people can just talk about coins. And it's just been awesome growing, growing with you guys and just experiencing this. Like I never even dealt with markets. You know, I, I couldn't have cared less about stocks a couple of years ago, but crypto just completely reshaped my, my mind. I, I've learned so many things, you know, and I feel like I've really kind of stepped out of the matrix and, uh, yeah, just really, really awesome year, man. I, I got nothing. That's it. That's all I got. So thank you so much for, uh, you know, joining this journey and we're about to do it all over again, except this time we're going to be a lot wiser and I'm very, very pumped for what's happening this year, guys. So that's all I got for you today. Enjoy the first day of the new year. I hope you're doing all right. I hope you didn't get too crazy last night. So that being said, guys, thank you so much. You freaking rule. Shout out to everyone. You guys are the reason that I do this every single day without you. I don't know. 
Couldn't even imagine life without you. That being said, my name is K-Dub. This is Crypto Zombie. Until next time, stay crypto and peace out.